All right, so Supernova just released another update for their devices, and we're gonna take a deep dive into that update. Some pretty exciting things here and some pretty big new features. So let's dive right into this update from Supernova. So first we're gonna talk about what they actually added as far as functionality to this device thanks to this software update. And there is actually a couple things here. So first we have stickers, and you can make them by just making any kind of doodle, or even a word. And then all you do is lasso select them, tap the three dots here, and you now have a new option called new sticker. And you can make a collection if you don't have any, or if you have another collection, like I had this other test one. So let's say, yes, we're going to add it to the happy collection. We're gonna call this one stick guy and create. And we can do the same thing with this high, three dots, new sticker. This one is just high and create. So now we have our own custom stickers and we can take a look at that now. So really what stickers are is just, is more of like a permanently saved selection. And that's pretty handy for several different things, especially if you do like to do goofy little characters or drawings that you want to decorate your notes with after the fact and you use a lot of the same ones, well, boom, stickers are here for you. So this was one of my first ones, the test smiley face here, here stick guy. And once you drop them in, it's really like any other thing that you've lasso selected. You can rotate, you can resize, let's make them really tiny here. You can cut it, you can move it, copy it, make it into a heading. Why not? So it really treats it like any other handwritten object. But then if you saw it in the sticker selection as well, it also has a whole bunch of built in stickers. And a lot of these are actually really fun. I mean, you get some lines, some grids that you can actually expand and draw in. Or, I mean, look at this little sticky note here. You can totally put this right on your page, resize it pretty huge here, put it over there, boom. Now you can actually say hello and just write a little note inside this little sticky note. Now, if the sizing isn't perfect for that, but hey, you can do it. And what's also really interesting is how it recognizes each stroke here and remembers the strokes. So yeah, let's just erase that one line or erase both those lines. So I bet you they probably made all of these built-in stickers on a Supernote device and then just allow that to be something that we can all gain access to, which is really cool. And now I can make my own smaller lines if I want to. And now I have my own little note that I can take wherever I want and I can re-lasso select that and shrink it back down and put it over here and rotate it and slap it on top of something. Anything like that. It is really just a saved selection of handwritten strokes. Really cool. I, I like that. I think some people may not like that functionality. They may want it to act more like an image you're applying over. But yeah, that's not really how these work. They are like full handwritten selections here. And they have all sorts of pre-made options here. Dining, look at that. It's like a little plate set here. You can add something to it. You can add some eggs that splatter on your plate. I mean, I'm no artist, so I'm gonna let them be the artist for me, but it's really cool the little things you can do with this feature. Not something that I'm like, oh, now it just makes my device useful again. But I have heard in the comments that some of you guys out there were looking forward to or wanted some sticker options on Supernote, and now you have it. You can also search stickers. So if I'm like, man, I really need some kind of cat. Well, look, boom, there's a cat one. Or what about shop? Oh, there's a shopping cart. So if you have an idea and you want to see if there's a built-in sticker, or I believe this will search even your pre-made one. So let's search 
high. Yep, there it goes. It gets our sticker that we made as well. So a really nice and pretty powerful search feature. It does exactly the job that you need it to do. You can also make a new collection right from down here and you can import stickers. Now, keep in mind, you can only import stickers that have been exported from a Supernote device like this. So let's say I really want to share Stick Guy with the world. So I can export this collection and it's now in my exports folder. So here it is right there. And now let's try importing it. So if I go back to my stickers, import, it sees this file on there, import, importing. Now I have another one of those collections. So if you make a really nice collection, you want to share it to a different person's Supernote device that's maybe not associated with your account, or you don't use Supernote's cloud service at all, and you just want to keep everything offline, well, you can still give it to your other Supernote device. Or if you get a new device on the road, you can import it to that device. So pretty handy here. Again, I think it would be cooler if this could import like a PNG file uh, or some kind of image and allow it to be a sticker as well. Even if you couldn't erase the individual strokes, I think that would be a cool option and maybe they'll add that. But as of right now, you can only really utilize the ones that they have built in or the ones you made yourself and that's stickers on the Super. If you go to settings system and then backup and restore, you can also back up your stickers, which is a nice option to have if you're worried about them at all. And next up, while we're in the settings page, we're gonna take a quick look at my device and they don't really explain exactly what this is going to be for. They explain the overview of what a pogo pin is, which is basically a way to connect to an accessory. And then they give a diagram of where it is on the Nomad, then the Manta, and then the dimensions of these pogo pins. And my theory is one of two things here. Either they're about to release a new accessory, like maybe a keyboard case or some external light or something like that to be used with these devices. Or the reason they're being so specific with all these dimensions and how to utilize this technology is because they're hoping a third party company will do that for them. And I think they're allowing this to be opened up to anyone. And you can just toggle on the pogo pin switch, connect your accessory and boom, now you have that connection. And I think that's really cool. I would probably say until there's an accessory you want to use it with, just keep it off. There's no reason to have that pin looking for connections or anything like that. I don't know if it will affect battery life, but I'm just gonna recommend keep that off until we see some kind of accessory for it. Let me know what kind of accessory you want, either a third party company or Supernote themselves to make for their Manta or their Nomad device. All right, then the last big change with this update is in the apps. If you go to the Supernote app store, there is a new app, which is the Inkflow. It's in beta, but it's a brand new app here. Looks like mine can be upgraded, so I'm gonna do that quick. All right, so with that updated, we're going to open the Inkflow app, and then it's going to ask you to connect your Supernote to a computer via USB. And you have to make sure side loading is turned off. I assume that's probably because it doesn't want your Supernote to think you're trying to side load an app right now. It is just trying to connect to it. So I'm gonna use my trusty MacBook here to connect and I'm going to allow that. All right, so you should be able to see my MacBook screen here as well. I'm going to make sure, yep, that this is in landscape mode as this will more accurately represent the tablet drawing experience. And yeah, that's what this is. This has now become like a Wacom external tablet for your desktop machine. Uh, and it's it's pretty cool. It works really well for being in beta. So just by hovering over the screen, you get to see some really responsive mouse movement. As long as you're in that hover radius, if I go outside of that, it immediately stops. 
but as long as you're within that screen distance for it to sense the magnets, it does a really good job. So as you can see, it's just acting like a mouse for your computer, which is how most of those Wacom styled tablets do. So let's say I go with a brush here. So I don't think the responsiveness is perfect yet. And I guess this app is still in beta. So we got to give them some credit here, but that is pretty stinking good. I mean, let's try like a latency test here. So it's kind of in the middle of the screen. So, I mean, that's pretty much instant from what I can tell. Personally, I think it'd be kind of cool if this tablet screen showed some of the after effects of your stroke at least, and maybe it disappeared after a little bit or did a refresh after a few strokes, just so you could reference this screen a little bit more. But I guess they're trying to make you look at the device screen. I don't know if that'd be useful. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see any kind of response from this screen showing your strokes, or if you like it, just be on desktop. So this seems to really be able to do the full job of a typical Wacom external tablet that some digital artists will use in their graphic design and everything. This is a great way to handwrite on a desk top. And I can see this being a great way to sign documents even and all sorts of things like that. It's just a really handy tool to have. And it's using something you already own. If you're watching this update video, you probably already have a Supernote device. This works on the Manta or the Nomad. And now you can just use it as an external tablet too. That just brings even more value to the Supernote device. I mean, just looking at this really basic Wacom tablet on b &H Photo, it is $100. And yeah, you might be able to find one for even cheaper, but let's say that's about right. You're getting an additional $100 value out of this tablet. And honestly, that's a good thing because these tablets aren't the cheapest with the e-ink screens and technology. But not only is it that tablet, but it's also a full writing and drawing tablet that you can take wherever you want and have its own operating system, its own storage, all that kind of stuff. And it can be your Wacom tablet for input on your desktop. I mean, that's really neat. So that's the new Inkflow app. Two pretty significant changes in this update. And then that mystery pogo pin switch that we don't even know what it's gonna do, but it has some pretty exciting new opportunities. Now, what are some of the more minor changes? And that is there's new cloud servers in Germany, Australia, Singapore, and South Africa, and optimized sync efficiency. That's more interesting to me as I'm already in the US and have a cloud server here, is that their sync efficiency is supposedly better. I do think that that is an area Supernote can always improve on. It's not like it's been super slow, but just knowing that this process will go smoother is great. They also mentioned that they no longer have the option to manually pick your DMS. So that's your data management server. So before when you would set up your device, I think you had two options to pick from. It was either the American or the Chinese server. So I picked the American one, but now it, does it based on your region. So you can go into display and input language and region and enter your region. So I am in the United States here and it knows that now and will use that to pick my DMS. Now I'm gonna breeze over a couple of these optimized changes, but take a look right here if you're curious as to what the changes exactly are. They're basically enhancing file transfers, making them even faster and better. They're enhancing opening and switching between files and notes, making that even snappier, which I think super notes ahead of things like the remarkable already in that aspect, but I'm glad to see them improving even more so because companies like books and some of the other more Android focused e-ink tablet companies, I think are a little bit snappier than Supernote. So hopefully they can match that now. And they have a little bit more natural file sorting. 
And all these things I think we're going to notice more as we keep using this software. I will update you guys probably in my YouTube shorts. So keep an eye on those if I can notice some of these more quality of life improvements. And then the last big section is just bug fixes in general. And again, I'm not going to read through all of these one by one. So feel free to pause the screen and read all of the fixes that it has here. But I do want to call out a couple ones in particular, which is these first couple here fix the issue where handwritten strokes wouldn't appear during writing on some Manta devices until after a screen refresh was performed. I didn't personally have that issue that I can recall on my Manta, but that sounds like a pretty big deal. So if you were experiencing some problem with your handwriting on the Manta, just not even showing up initially, definitely update because this should fix that. Now, this other one I did experience, which was fix the issue where some Manta devices experience that normal rapid drop in battery from 20 percent to zero percent and then it just says to charge the manta fully to calibrate the battery better after upgrading which i did that and now it seems to be much more accurate with battery life and i will obviously keep you guys posted as i notice that more and see if it ever does do that rapid drop again but those were some pretty big manta specific flaws that it seems like they have worked out now but that's basically the update 3.23.32. I'm gonna be honest, their numbering scheme doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me very often, but that is the update here. And this is publicly available now. I installed it on my Nomad, which is not on any kind of beta. This is not a beta version that I'm running here. This is the actual release. The Inkflow app is on beta, but everything else is actually out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this update to the Supernote Manta. Hope you guys learned something new in this video. And if you like this pen loop that you see attached to my lovely Supernote Manta here, this is something that I designed and made for the Manta myself. I'm gonna have the link to my website where you can buy this in the description. I know a lot of you guys out there have already bought it. And if you got yours, and have some thoughts about it please let me know in the comments down below i want to know if you guys love it if you guys are like hey this is pretty great but there's this this and that flaw any suggestions you have for like a version 2 or anything like that please let me know i've been using it i've been loving it but i'd love to hear from you guys as well if you're curious about the setup and equipment i have it's all gonna be linked in the description down below and if you have not gotten a supernote device yet and you're looking to get one do it now because they are saying that they will be raising prices at the end of April because of the new tariffs. So if you're looking for a Supernote device, purchase it now. They said they'll honor the price even if it doesn't ship immediately if you order today. So order before the end of April, please. If you're at all considering one, just do it. It's gonna save you some money. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and comment down below. And of course, subscribe. It really does help this channel continue to grow and for me to make more content like this. I took like a week hiatus from posting and the channel seemed to have survived it. So I just had a lot going on at my church and a couple other things that took a lot of my time. I, this is not my only job right now either. So some other things got busy. I had to put this on pause for a little bit but I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I will be at least posting about once a week for probably ever. <laughs> and if you guys have any questions about these devices, about iPads, about Macs, just let me know in the comments down below and I would love to follow up with a video or just answer your question directly. And as always, have a great rest of your day.